Pete, come here. Danny, Michael. Oh, man, I could have won. I could beat you any day. What is it? It's a black widow. So I saw the car, but it was on the wrong side of the road, and his lights were on. So what did you do? Well, I kept going. Well, I hope no one got hurt. Honey, I figured it was probably a couple of teenagers got the keys to the car and had a whole night to kill. Hmm. Well, I am glad you're back. This is too big of a house to be all alone by myself in. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll get used to it. Mm -hmm. You'll get used to this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> At two months, nice try, buddy. No, I swear to God, I can. He's saying he's going. He's going. He's going. Please help me. Let me out. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. She is not. She is not trapped. She is safe and secure. Mm. I gotta go to work. No. Oh, come on, don't. What time should I see you there tonight? Well, I'm not sure. In the old days, the christenings used to be around sundown. Okay. I'll see you then. Ooh. 
Uh, you know, you're going to be pretty good at that. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Hey, Camp. You got someone here to see you. Tell him I'll be right with him. What's up, Cameron? Uh, it's probably just some new distributor with a complaint. Don't worry about it. I'll see him. Come on, Dick. Turn off that boob tube and check on that special order from Mrs. Sanford. Lord only knows how much intelligence has been sapped out of him. It's all right, Martha. Just let him take his time. <laughs> Dick, Mrs. Sanford is waiting patiently. Oh my God, no. Martha, is everything okay? I can't imagine it. Oh Lord, help us. What happened? Family was killed down Highway 1 at Point Race. Husband and wife and two kids. Oh my God, that's horrible. When? Last night. Same exact thing happened two weeks ago. Dick, stop scaring her. What? Newsman said it. Martha, oh. not me. Third time it's happened in these parts. Bellinus, then Invertness. Each time a family with little ones chopped up like steaks at a cookout. Dick Rizicky, you shut your mouth right now, damn news people. Scaring everyone. They should just let the police handle it. Michael was there. <sighs> well, I mean, he wasn't there. He was in the city last night. He got back late. Highway 1 is the only way home. Get a hold of yourself, Martha. It's a long piece of road. But he may have seen something. Mrs. Sanford, you should tell him to go and talk to the police. Who knows what he might have seen out there? Aren't I right, Dick? Well, newsmen did say they were strapped for witnesses. Well, he said he saw a car pulled over on the side of the road, buddy. He... Martha's right. You never know about something like this. Twice a year, we pack the product of our labor into these crates and send it off into the world. That makes tonight special. And I'm glad you could all be here to share in it. However, I think you'd all agree that this date carries a particular significance, since it is the first vintage to be christened since Mrs. Sanford passed on. I honestly don't have any special words Maybe her son can supply those for us. I know these past few years have been difficult. And I'll be honest with you, when I came back to Soleto a few months ago, I had no intention of staying. This didn't feel like my hometown anymore. Something was missing. And Diane and I were packing our bags to leave when she turned to me and she said, uh, 
So, who's taking over the family business? And it hit me. I couldn't leave this place. Hey, a few months. <laughs> it's not much, but we're still standing. And I bet my mom and dad are up there someplace looking down on us saying, I can't believe that little shit is doing it without us. <laughs> I want you all to know I'm not here to take their place. I'm here to take us back to what we were and to what we've always been, a family. This is how it's done in Soleto. For 100 years, this is the way it's done. As the soil absorbs the wine, so will the coming year be a good one. We'll take home a bottle to our families. Great. Another free bottle. When do we see a raise? Shut up, John. Lucky you still got a job. No, it's all right. He's got a right. I've got some ideas on how to make this place more profitable. But you're gonna have to be patient, all right? Nothing's come together just yet. Thank you. Hey, Michael. Hey. So how did it go in the city last night? It was fine. Just fine? Yeah. They're nice people, the Japanese. Well, I assume they made an offer. Yeah, and I rejected it, like I did last week and the week before. You know, money like theirs is the kind of expansion this operation needs. You know, it puts something in everybody's pocket. It would mean the reins would be in somebody else's hands, and that's not what my father envisioned for this place. Come on. In the past five years, we've seen infestation increase in competition, a tenfold jump in workman's comp payments. Your, your father never had it this tough. But as a matter of fact, I was talking to a very smart young man who came by this morning. I asked him to stick around and have a chat with you. I think I saw him here somewhere. very innovative ideas about expanding the operation without still maintaining. You're looking to sell the winery. I'm in for the long haul, Cameron. I thought you were too. It could have been us. It was an hour away from here. And the one that happened two weeks ago was an hour and a half away, which means it's getting closer. And the police haven't been able to find out who's behind it either. And they've been searching for weeks and now... Diane, enough. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's just people who go and pick up hitchhikers should know better. It could never happen to us, all right? Never. There are children. I mean, how could anyone do that to children? If someone ever tried that, I'd, I'd kill him. I just thought that by moving here... Moving back to Soleto is the smartest thing we ever did. Don't you feel it? I mean, I've got my hands on my future here. Our future? Yes, our future. His future. Her. <laughs> Don't you feel it, Diane? You know, our kids are gonna grow up in one of the last untouched landscapes in this country. I mean, this is it, Diane. This is where we belong. Oh, God, I 
I'm sorry. It's all right. It's just a scratch happens all the time. See? It's not, it's not even bleeding. Well, I promise not to bother you when you're shaving from now on. Okay, that's uh, fifteen hundred dollars for the gas. <laughs> you want me to check the oil for you? No thanks. Uh, I feel kind of guilty for not introducing myself to you before, because you come in so often and all. I'm I'm Pete Lawrence. Diane Sandwich. Yeah, I know. Has Michael ever mentioned me? No. <laughs> Shit, man. We were neighbors back in the old days. That's uh, my folks' house. It's like a half mile down the road from you guys. Oh, I've met them. Oh, yeah. My, my mom probably brought you a pie or fudge or something when you guys moved in, right? But uh, me and Mike, I mean, we raised hell up in them hills. I mean, we were, we were good buddies. We were best friends, really. He never told me. It's funny how Mike hasn't come in here to say hi to me. I mean, there's only two service stations in the whole valley. Is he trying to avoid me or something? Huh? Oh, you know, I'll bet he told you how we used to call ourselves a Figaretto Four. Who came up with that ridiculous name, but it stuck somehow. Yeah, here it is. That's us. That's me. That's Michael. And uh, the Evans boys, Sean and Danny. Sean's a guy with the crooked front teeth. It's cute. <laughs> Maybe it's too tough for him. What was Sean and Danny gone like they are? And nothing's really ever been the same around here since those days. Maybe it's just too tough for him to see me. You think? I really don't know anything about it. I'm sorry. No, I, oh, that's okay. I'm, I know he's busy, but uh, just, would you tell him that I said hello, and and just tell him to come by sometime. I just want to shoot the shit with him. Well, I'll let him know. neighbors you keep playing the same song yeah it's dad's old records is anything wrong no did you mess with my stereo <laughs> are you kidding i would never hear the end of it come on diane did you oh, hmm? maybe i kicked up the bass a little bit you can always turn it back down come on don't change the subject on me is there anything bothering you 
just work. The wine biz. <laughs> ah, the wine biz. Met a guy named Pete Lawrence today. Wants you to come see him. Well, Pete, <laughs> he's our village idiot. Well, that makes sense, seeing that he's a friend of yours. <laughs> I hardly knew him. All I know is that he wants you to come down and talk with him. Honey, why don't you go to the uh, 76 station on Perfidia from now on, okay? I mean, Pete, he was diagnosed as, I don't know, schizophrenic or something. You seem harmless enough. Well, I don't want you near the guy. All right, all right. Did you see anything that night? Sleep. I gotta get up early tomorrow. Oh, come on, talk to me. What, Diane? About what? Martha said you should go to the police. Dick agreed. You told Dick and Martha that I drove by there? Well, yeah. And they said they were begging for witnesses and... <sighs> Fucking fantastic. Well, the whole town's gonna be all over my back. Be a good citizen. Go to the police. Well, you should. You should go to the police and tell them what you saw. All right, Diane, for the last time, all I saw was a car parked on the side of the road. As far as I'm concerned, it was empty. Why would the cops give a, a shit about that? Oh, come on. You're so full of crap. This is what's been bothering you for the past few days. Come on. Take an hour out of your day tomorrow and go down to the police station and just tell them. I was on Highway 1 last night, and I didn't see anything except a parked car. So you'll get it off your chest. And the police will have a tiny scrap of information, and everybody will be happy. I don't care about making everyone happy. I care about you. So for you, I'll... Uh... Thank you. I promise I won't bother you about it ever again. No, no, it's unfathomable that he missed it. There's no way. He thinks it was around midnight. Not certain of the time, but certain of the vehicle. A dark blue station wagon, which we know is the Wade's car. A dark blue Ford wagon. Undoubtedly the Wade's car. Flash forward a couple of hours, along comes our illegal alien, I don't know nothing, uh, vegetable truck driver Santos at 2 a.m. Just after. Just after 2 a.m. He comes across the same scene, only this time, there's body parts all over the road. You got a head here, a leg there, torso over behind a bush, what have you. He actually has to swerve to avoid hitting these pieces of Wade family. So? So, how long does it take to cut up a family of four? Oh, come on. I'm trying to eat lunch here. Keep up with me here, Bernie. As far as I'm concerned, we can safely say that between the hours of midnight and 2 a.m. Monday morning, the killer dismembers his victims. A two-hour killing window. And this guy, Sanford. Sanford must have been there right before it happened, or even as it happened. The wagon was there. The family must have been in it, or near it, at least. I'm betting that our man in the glass boot knows more than he knows he knows. Come on, English, Pastone. English. He was there. He was there, maybe not standing watching, but he drove past. At the very least, Michael Sanford was a witness to the scene of a murder. Maybe he witnessed a murder without even knowing it. Let's give it a shot. Call Garrett, see what he thinks. Essentially, the eyes are sort of a camera in which you can figure the brain is a roll of film. Everything we see, feel, touch is stored for an indefinite period of time. 
The key is being able to retrieve it. Stop. I'm not going to sit here and have a pocket watch dangled in front of my face and have this clown tell me I'm getting very sleepy. No, no you way. Know, I got three families being stored in a meat locker in sandwich bags. How do you feel about that? I understand your skepticism, Mr. Sanford. But let me tell you about a discovery that was made some time ago by a man named Milton Erickson. Given the proper incentive, you can remember verbatim your seventh grade term paper. The fine print on a box of Wheaties. And that sounds incredible, doesn't it? Our minds are bombarded constantly by words and images. And its primary function is to edit out what we don't need. Right now, my voice, my face, are being received by your conscious memory. But the tick of the clock, the pattern on Detective Morris's tie, sounds from under the door, the smell of coffee and donuts. A thousand bits of information are going directly into your subconscious, where they will remain for the rest of your life. The human brain is like a supercomputer, Mr. Sanford. It remembers 5,000 pieces of information at every glance and remembers them all. So, you think I saw something out there? Well, I'd like a chance to find that out. Yeah? Well, you're nuts. I slowed down and looked, man. It was dark. It wasn't. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary. I was driving too fast to see jack shit. Well, you were close, right? For a moment, at least, as close as you are to me. What if something was going on that you couldn't substantially detect? Fleeting, barely noticeable, peripheral. That information is locked up inside you. Let me extract it. For what? I'm not going to testify against something I didn't even see. Hey. What are you afraid of? We're asking you to go under hypnosis because all of Sonoma County could benefit. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work. So what's the problem? You're not gonna make me bark like a dog or something, are you? Trust me, Mr. Sanford, you have nothing to worry about. Michael? Michael, is that you? doing? I was out. Went for a drive. A drive? Where? Around. Couldn't sleep. Are you nervous about tomorrow? No. Not at all. Yes, you are. But you'll feel better once you've done it. OK. Where are you now? Coming around the corner. How fast are you traveling? 45, 46, 47. You're moving pretty quick. Yes, 49, 50. Is there a clock on the dashboard? Yes. What time does it say? Three minutes to 12. You're moving pretty fast. Do you see anything else? I do. What is it? Light. How fast are you going now? 46, 42, 39. I want you to go slower, Michael. I want you to go as slow as you possibly can. It's a blue station wagon. You're looking at it very carefully. You're passing it very slowly. It's close. I can touch it. No, don't touch it. Just look at it and tell me what you see. It's a Ford Taurus. License number two. GKI322. What else about the car? What else do you see? Blood.
Here's the blood. All right, Michael, what else do you see? What else? Are there any people? I can't see everything. I, I can just... I can see a car door is open. There's something there. What is it, Michael? I don't know. Try. Try and see it. You can see it. <laughs> There's light. It's bright. And the sun is in my eyes. What is he saying? It was midnight. High beams. Listen to me, Michael. Listen to me. Do you see any people? children the two children <laughs> oh my god oh my god there's someone there is it a man <laughs> yes i think it is Can you describe him? I can't. I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. No! It's okay, Mike. It's okay. Sit down. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Sit down. You saw the face. Can you describe? Is he white, black, tall, or short, white? Shh. Do you know the face? Have you seen the face? Could you describe it? All right. All right, Michael. Your husband, in effect, knows who the killer is. He has a picture in his head, a sort of a still life depicting the scene of the crime, a face. All we have to do is find it. This house was everything to Dad, much more so than the winery or the vineyard the town even he's always working on it watering the yard or building something he really loved it here you know this was his whole life How old were you when he died? Thirteen. I was thirteen years old. What exactly did he die of? Car accident. Killed him and Sean Evans and... Uh, it was real bad. I'm sorry, okay? You still love me? Huh? No. Nothing. Let me through! Let me through! 
This is the second time this month, and I'm not going to take it anymore. You understand? Go on, get! All right, show is over. Come on. Show's Everybody, over. back to work. Back to work. A good day to work. What can I do? I mean, what in the hell can I do? Cameron, please, I'm asking you. Well, a buck or two an hour might be a good place to start. I can't do that right now. Have any of you people considered that the world is drinking less premium wine these days? Folks don't like plunking down 25 bucks on a quart of vino, okay? I apologize. Great! Bring on the big machines, and we're clinging to this old tradition family operation. Don't mean a damn thing anymore. You want my advice, right? Well, my advice is real simple. The offers are coming in. You got the Japanese, you got the Mondavis, you got Mr. Aretto. Take one of the offers, Michael. Take one while you still can. Can't sell this place. Damn it! Damn you, Michael! Look, one day a long time ago, when I was small, my father came home from the autumn crush. Seemed like he'd been gone for weeks, and I didn't understand. See, this vineyard was not a great thing to me. It took my father away. One night, I was so upset, I just started crying. He came to me, and he picked me up, and he said, Son, this vineyard is our life here. And one day, we'll all own a piece of it. And Mr. Sanford's going to take care of all of us forever. These men... These men all have children, Michael. They're hungry, so what do you expect? I expect this town to give me a chance. Well, then give them a chance. I think you ought to talk to these buyers. Look at all the options. Mr. Aretto had a reasonable offer. Listen, I don't want you negotiating on my behalf for anything. Michael, I'm Damn not... it, I said no, and that's it. What are you not understanding here? I don't want you going behind my back, and I don't care what kind of resentment I get from you or this whole fucking town. I am going to do what I need to do. You people want to kick me around for the rest of your lives? Fine. I guess that's just what happens when someone dies around here. I don't know what you're talking about. The hell you don't. He would have wanted it this way. doing the best that I can. Can he? He's going behind my back. I need time. I need more time. What does they want from me? What is this going to stop? stop? It's got to stop. You stop. Look at me. Come on. Look at me. This is absolutely normal. You're receiving some confusing messages from your subconscious mind. Memories, nightmares, things you've tucked away. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry? He's having goddamn hallucinations. I am aware of that. You have to understand that this is good. It's what we want and need. It's the face. He looked right in my eyes. 
Do you want to go back under? No. I just want the guy caught. I want to sleep again. I understand. scared me. How long have you been standing there? What you working on? Collage from my book. What do you think? Mm. I like it. It's nice. <laughs> well, that's a rave review. I'm not through with it yet. I gotta go back down there tomorrow to fill in those blank spots. The thing that really pisses me off, though, is that I was gonna set up these shots using my instant camera, but the thing's gone up and disappeared on me. I don't suppose you've seen it now, have you? No, sorry. I'm gonna go for a drive. What time is it? I don't know, midnight one. Uh, I'll be back in a bit. Will you drive past where you saw the accident? It wasn't an accident. It was a murder. Someone murdered them. Will you see the... Yes. Probably. Always. Let's stop by and say hello. <laughs> you know, I used to go to school here. All right, you guys, that's enough. Slow it down. Honey, why don't you let me finish up here and I'll see you at home, okay? I'm almost done. Okay. Stop it, you guys. Stop it right now. What's up, you guys? Goddamn second. Get the hell away from them. Michael? Get the hell away from them. Do you hear me? Get away from them. What's wrong? What? What's the matter? You know what's the matter. You know what's the matter, and I know too, motherfucker. I saw you. Michael, what are you saying? Just call Detective Festone, all right? I've seen your face, you son of a bitch. I've seen you before. Let's just talk about this. Michael, let's just, let's just settle down. We're all a little confused here. We'll go inside. We can talk about it. I've seen you. your face. I know you. Hey! What are you doing? I think it's time that you leave now, Mr. C. I checked out Stuart Weissman, you know, just to be sure. He, he was arrested in Berkeley for protesting a certain war several years ago, but other than that, he's got an airtight alibi. Don't waste your time, Sheriff Foley. Well, well Michael must have just thought he was someone else. You know, I, I, I'm sure your friend, uh, Dr. Jarrett, can shed some light on that. But uh, for me, uh, Mrs. Sanford. Diane. Diane, I, I don't know you too well. I knew your husband when he was in the crib, but he went away uh, for so long. You know, hell, it must be 20 years at least. Well, God damn it, you know, I, I remember he was a good kid. Just uh, don't expect too much, that's all. See, this is a small town, small talk, small mind. You don't have to pretend with me anymore, Sheriff Foley. I know what's going on. People treat us differently here. I mean, even though Michael was born here, even though this town exists because of his family's winery, they don't want us here anymore. I mean, we're outsiders. All because of some shit that nobody wants to talk about. 
Stuff that happened years and years ago. Well, you're talking to the one man in Saletto who has yet to pick a grape. But yes, I'd say there's definitely some leftover tension hanging around here. So then what gives, Foley? What happened? People had a lot of hope for this town. And, and when Michael's father died, it seemed like a lot of those dreams just disappeared. But it, it, it's not my business. If Michael hasn't told you, and I'm sure he has his reasons. All that and now this. I can't imagine what people will be saying. Well, I'm here to protect and serve you, ma'am. But understand, I serve them too. Now, you just stay out of sight for a while. This will pass, I promise you. Now, don't, don't bother. I, I, I know the way out. Stop, stop. Stop, stop the car. Stop the car, someone might need help back there. You stopped the car? Yes. You've gotten out of the car? Yes. What are you doing now? I'm walking toward it. It's quiet. I don't see anything. Hey. The light's right in my eyes. Cut it out. High beams from the blue wagon. No, son. And what do you see? What do you see, Michael? <laughs> Children. <laughs> They're laughing. I can hear them laughing. That's impossible. <laughs> you must see something, Michael. What is it? I can't stay here. I have to go. Please, Michael, tell me what you see. Start the car. Michael? Michael, Michael! God, help me, Michael. Michael, help me, please. Michael, 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 Michael! Help me! Michael! Michael, Michael! 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 Michael, what do you see? Wait, I know you saw something, someone. <laughs> Nothing. We were so close. No, please. No, please. I just want to go home. I'll be fine. Just, just take me home. You remember how he said he never got out of the car? Well, forget that. Not only did he get out of the car, but he walked back toward the crime scene. That's bullshit. What do you mean, it's bullshit? Sanford said it himself. So what did he see? It's all mixed up, but according to this, he got halfway there when a case of the creeps set in, hightailed it back to his rover, and flew. So it's more of the same? No, it's not more of the same. Along the way, he heard voices and laughter, kids laughing. They were all dead. So we thought, but he says that he was blinded by a light of some sort. Garrett asked if he means high beams, and Sanford says no. Son. If he was blinded, how did he see the supposed face? If any of this came out of real, live, conscious interrogation, then we'd have something. But what the hell is this? Hypnosis with no physical evidence. DA will laugh us out of his office. Look, why don't we just pinch this guy and hold him till the next family fertilizes the field? Can't do it, Bernie. Complete waste of time. What do you mean we can't do it, Jake? You think these bodies are just falling out of nowhere? Whoever this is, they don't kill like they want to. They kill like they have to. There's no evidence that anyone was there. There's no evidence of a struggle and no motive either. It's almost like they don't know why they're doing it. No, Bernie. We 
can't hold Michael Sanford. We can't hold anybody. Still works. All right, you can put five rounds in the hole, one in the chamber. Then you rack it like this. It's ready to go. All right. Whoa. Diane, please. Just put it up to your shoulder, right about here. All right, then you make sure it's pumped. You take the safety off, then you just squeeze the trigger. That's going to kick a little bit, Diane, but I think you can handle it. Excellent. Good, good. Although, next time you shoot, you've got to pump it. Make sure you've got another round in there, all right? OK, Diane? Michael, we should just go away. I think I'm going to put this in the front hall closet. Now, you remember that. You make note of it. Back to Spain. Remember how great that was? Where we met? Diane, are you going to remember that the shotgun is in the front hall cabinet? this was out here. Figaretto 4? It's our tree house. Let's go. Up the tree? No, no way. Oh, come on. I could climb up that high. Honey, it's dangerous. Pete, he once found a black widow spider up there. Put it in a jar and watched it die. Pete? Yeah, Lawrence. It's him and me and Sean and Danny Evans. Figure out a four. I told you that, didn't I? I thought you said. My hook and ladder 242. I always wondered where this thing wound up. Not the only ancient artifact out here. You boys started out in the hard stuff pretty early. Fucking punks. Come out here and get drunk all night long. I've never heard anyone. I have. Talking and playing music and stuff. I hear them. Come on, let's get out of here. Michael? Michael, what are you doing? I was calling you shit. You scared the hell out of me. What are you doing? I went for a drive. Washed the car. Christ. I spoke with Dr. Federley today, and he says he wants to see you. As soon as you can free up some time. I mean, he said he'd even come up here if you want. 
I don't know about that, sweets. I'm pretty busy these days. You know, I gotta squeeze those grapes, gotta make money for those grape pickers. Well, don't you think it would be important to talk with someone besides Dr. Garrett about your problem? I don't have a problem. It's their problem. I'm the solution. They need me to find this creep, right? Well, I'm their ace in the hole. <gasps> that, that's blood. Of course it's blood, Diane. Of course it is. I didn't want to tell you because I thought you'd cry your goddamn eyes out. You see, Diane, we're living in the country. And in the country, you gotta be tough. You gotta learn how to be strong. You gotta learn how to deal with a little roadkill every once in a while, okay? You think you can handle that, Diane? Huh? you to the party. Really two miles outside my jurisdiction, Festo. Two miles. Yep. It's getting closer. I'd start keeping that gun loaded if I were you. It'd help you boys start using our tax dollars in some constructive way. We're trying, Sheriff. Contrary to popular belief. Okay, put it in a wagon. Need I ask? Same, same. Mommy, daddy, two kids. Eyes poked out with a sharp instrument, fingers cut off the right hand. All right, all right. It's not all right. This motherfucker is carving up kids, goddammit. I want his corpse strung out on a meat hood. Hey, Jake. I found another one. For something? Same was found at the other crime scenes. It's the first thing that comes out of an instant camera when you load it. Pack it. Gotta get out of here, Sheriff. Holy, ladies, good morning. What's going on? Is uh, Michael home? Uh, no. Uh, you sure? Uh, his car is in the driveway. Oh, it's not running well. He got a lift to work this morning. Ask her. Well, come on, Kate. Uh, we'll deal with this later. Ask her, or I will. Uh, Diane, uh, we need to know where your husband was last night. With me. All night? Yes. You're sure? Uh, yes, I'm sure. I 
Wouldn't want someone I care about be running around in times like these. Tell that to my son. He's still afraid to go to school. She's lying. I'm what? I saw Michael drive past our place last night, alone. And what are you doing? Sitting around in your window all day? With a shotgun in my lap. I think I've heard about enough, Katie. Mrs. Sanford says her husband was with her all through the night, and that's the way it is. Come on, lady, stop all the pouting and let's uh, let her be. So what the hell was that all about? What are we going to do, Michael? I'm pretty hungry. How about some brunch? These people, these, these people don't want us here anymore. They're tired of it. Tired of what? Honey, the men and women of this town are a bunch of lonely old losers who don't have anything better to do with their lives than to worry about things that don't concern them. So fuck them all. Where did you get all this contempt? These are, these are your people, Michael. These are your friends. My friends? Yeah. <laughs> so where were they? Where were they when I needed them? I don't understand what you mean. You see this? This is for luck. These miserable bastards. Luck. They don't think I'm out there slicing up these families. Oh, hell no. They sent a lynch mob here. I have bad luck, Diane, and so are you. Bad luck. They blame all their problems on me. They want me out. They want, they want to run this place themselves. Wait a second. This is not about money, and this is not about some superstition. You're acting like you understand. You don't know anything about this place. Three months and you think you've got it all figured out? Your family built this winery. Your family built this town. Soleto has existed for a hundred years because of you. The problem is that they don't like you. Your mom, your dad. My you... dad was a god to these people. <laughs> We've got to get out of here, Michael. Listen to me, for a little while at least. It can be like, like when we first met, you and me together. We knew we could, we could make it together. No, no, no! No, you don't, no, 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 no. No, I am staying here. Until he tries to take me out, I am staying here. He wants a fight, I'm right here, I'm not leaving. So where are my keys? Where are my car keys? I don't know. You lifted them off me, didn't you? You've gotten better and better with your little tricks, and now you can do it without me even knowing. You've been spying on me, haven't you, Diane? Spying on you? I haven't been sp Come here. Let go of me. Let go of me. Are you against me, Diane? Are you against me? Now, I'm going to see my parents now. It'll be a nice little reunion. Mommy and Daddy and their wonderful prodigal son.
I was so excited about moving back here, you know? Settling down, finding some continuity. We've been on the road for such a long time, Michael. Especially you. You have to go home. Resolve the things that kept you away all these years. Anyway, I... I need some time out for myself to... to sort this out in my head. I'll be at the Queen Anne in San Francisco. Here, here's the number if you want to call. Pete? Anna Sanford. No, please, uh, okay, wait, wait, don't, don't, don't. I'm fine, I'm just, I'm not gonna hurt you. What are you doing here? I thought you were Michael, I thought. What am I doing here? No, Michael. I haven't seen Michael since you guys came back into town because he don't visit his friends no more. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like when everybody treats you like you don't exist no more. Like, have all your friends taken away from you just like that. Hey, Michael Sanford was my best friend. We, we had all kinds of things going up on that property of yours. We had tree forts and secret stingray bike ramps and indoor hide-and-seek. We were the Figaretto Four. I remember who it was that gave us that name, too. It was Michael's dad, because uh, we used to play around in the fig trees out by the fort. <laughs> Once I was playing out there and I caught this black widow spider. And you put it in a jar and watched it die. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it died. Finally. So much the better, though, really. Sean and Danny, they were so scared of that thing, you know? And, uh, Michael... Michael said that it was, uh, torture. You know? To keep it in there. Just toying with it while it struggled to survive. Uh, well, we were 13 years old that year. And uh, Michael's dad decided to take the Figaretto Four on a fishing trip down to Tomales Bay. But uh, yeah, I got sick that day. And I couldn't go. So it was just the three of them. Just Michael, Danny. And Sean. Can you imagine what that was like? Huh? I, I, in a matter of hours, I went from having three of the best friends in the whole world to having none.
please! Michael! I understand now. My father gone. Sean Evans gone. What happened to Danny and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Evans? Did they move away? Hmm. The town suffered. And your mom took over the winery. Come on, don't hide from me anymore. I'm your friend. Above anything else, that's what I am. I didn't know what to do. I was in shock. I just walked away. And when it was all over, my mother couldn't deal with it, so she sent me away to boarding school. I had questions. I had things that I needed explained. No one took my hand, said, Michael, this is why you acted like that. This is, this is why it's not your fault they're gone. So I just put it away. <laughs> around here. Maybe it's bad luck to even talk about it. It's over now. It's all over. From here to here, here to here. They'll be nowhere near our operation. We won't even see them. And this is what, a kind of... Uh... It's a lease. See, Omatsu pays us X amount of dollars to lease the land for 10 years. After that, we either renegotiate or we send them packing. We're the landlords. Yeah, but lease. Hell, it's probably just peanuts. <laughs> the amount we agreed to has more zeros than I've ever seen. It's just... It sounds a little too good. So where's all this money going? To the stockholders, of course. We well, don't have any. Oh, yes, we do. The employees. With my dad's original group ownership plan back in effect, we all get a piece. So it's all for real? Cam, this is what I was talking about. This is what my dad would have wanted. I just needed some time to make it work. So I guess I better call this uh, Retta fella and tell him to take his offer elsewhere. I think you should. <laughs> Oh, it's all good. Yeah. Well, say hi to Evan and Shelly for me. Okay. Yeah, I got it right here. The uh, serial number is... Hello? 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 God damn it. Got paid that bill. I paid that bill. I have to check in the mail. That's what that is. Well, look who it is. You finally come back to say hello. What the hell are you doing in here?
show you when you get here. Please, hurry. I'm on my way. Downstairs. Hey, honey. Diane. What's that? Diane, what the fuck is happening here? What is this? <laughs> Diane. How could you? How could you? I don't know what. How could I? Detective Pesto, I'm telling you, I got him right here. Yeah. I got Mike and Sanford. I've got the evidence. I've got the whole Megillia. Well, it's not that I don't want you to hurry on down. It's, you know, all right. Uh, yeah. Bye. Foley. Foley. What is it, Michael? Something's wrong. Something's wrong with this. Yeah, all right, Michael. Someone will be here shortly. You'll help sort the whole thing out. Please, Foley, I'm telling you there's something wrong here. Michael, you need to calm down. Please. Come on, Michael, just sit down. Please listen to me! God damn it, Michael, what the hell are you doing? Foley, don't I do need this. your help! Don't do this, Michael, don't make it work! Am I coming back, Todd? Um, <clears throat> can, I, can I help you? I'm here to see Michael Sanford. You from the Santa Rosa PD? Hell, you guys are quick! The police force, no. Well, I know you're from somewhere, don't I? I don't think so. Well, you've been around town a while, right? I think I may have seen you around. I've been staying at the motel for the past few weeks, trying to make a deal with a local vineyard. An observant man, Sheriff. Oh, well, you know, it's my job. It's funny. I swear I know you from somewhere else. Are you from these parts originally? Well, Sheriff Foley, I have to say, I'm very impressed. Then I'm right. You're a local. I used to be. Um, my folks moved us away when I was very small, after the accident. 
I go by Mr. Oretto. Oretto? Strange, uh, I, I, I don't recall the name. Well, sir, if you can call me whatever you like. Oretto, Evans, Figaretto. It's all the same. Listen, I, I, I'm a little mixed up. But why are you here to see Michael? Foley. Well, Sheriff, it's, uh, it's like this. Foley. God damn it, Michael. I Foley! Hi, Michael. How you doing in there? so great that we could finally get together again after all these years. It's important to stay in touch, don't you think? Danny Evans. And what's really great how well you're doing with yourself. That is a beautiful woman. Oh, my God, Daddy. Look, listen to me. Sit down. How does it feel in there, Michael? How does it feel to be inside the killing jar? Danny, wait a second. Wait a second. Let me finish my sentence. God damn it! That is so fucking rude, Michael! Danny. Please, I, I, I'm so... Don't say that. Don't tell me you're fucking sorry, because I don't want to hear it. Do you have any idea what it feels like to have pain with every breath? I mean, all the time. And when you do finally get to fall asleep, you still feel it. Even in your dreams. I'm talking about years, Michael. See, I don't think you have any idea. You left me trapped, bleeding in the back seat of that car, waiting to burn. Help me, Michael! This is how you left me, Michael. You can't even look at it. You can't even look at what you did. So don't tell me that you're fucking sorry, because I don't want to fucking hear it. it. Makes me sick. What can I do? Oh, thanks for offering my... It means so much to me. Please, what do you want? Tell me what you want. Yeah. Everything you've got. Everything you've got. That's what I'm gonna get. Danny, no. Danny!
Yes. What is it? Uh, Diane? I don't know you. I know you don't. I'm, I'm Tim Lawrence from the Saletto Sheriff's Office. I thought Foley was the only... I've been on loan to the uh, Santa Rosa PD until now. Uh, help out with the recent problems. Uh, that's why I'm here, ma'am. Well, I can't answer any questions right now. Well, I won't ask you any. I just need to take a quick look at the house. I won't take that. <sighs> Please, come back another time. funny because, you know, I was, I was just down the road at my folks' house when I got the call. You're Pete's brother? Yeah. Uh, you must know him from the filling station. Yeah, he's my little bro. Mike. Oh, fuck, man. Danny. Danny. Oh, Pete. Oh, Pete. Well, I can't answer any questions right now, Officer Lawrence. Please, call me Tim. Pete. Pete, listen to me. Listen to me. You gotta help me. You gotta get me out of here. Danny's on his way to Diane. Okay. Boy, this house sure brings it all back. We used to play all kinds of games here. I know every hiding place in it. Hell, I could still find my way around here in the dark. Wait. I want to see the keys, man. Yeah. This house sure knows how to keep a secret. I don't know what you mean. Secrets, Diane. This house is packed with them. See, that's what makes this house of yours so special, Mrs. Sanford. Things like that. Good to see you, Mike. Come on, Pete. You gotta stick with me here. You sure there's nothing I can do for you? Just some wood for the fire? It's gonna be a cold night. Apply pressure. Come on. Put down the high pressure. I missed you, man. I really missed you. Go to Diane. Take my truck. Yeah. I need you to hang on. Oh, Pete. Come on, Pete. Hey, are you with me? Yes. I'm here, man. Go, go, keep going. I'm okay. Michael said something about a tree house in his confession. The sheriff wanted me to come over and check it out for evidence. How long is this going to take? Just take a minute, and then I'll be out of your hair. Believe me, I know what you're going through here. What the fuck is this? is on the way. Yeah. Michael Sanford. Call the highway patrol and Diane Sanford. Get him out there right now. Looks like he's on his way back to the house. Tell him suspect is armed and dangerous, extremely dangerous. Hang in there. Hang in there. We know. We know. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. Just hang in there. What? Michael. Diane! 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 
You used to have a lot of fun in that old treehouse. Actually, my brother fell out of there once, broke his arm. Pete's a nice guy. Sean. I mean, it wasn't my brother that got hurt. It was Sean Evans that just got mixed up. <laughs> oh, well, look at this. Michael used to have a great time with this old thing. What is it? It's a killing jar. I know it sounds sadistic, but you know kids, right? <laughs> yeah, Michael used to love to watch a spider trapped inside there. He'd spend hours watching him die. I know we were just kids, and I probably shouldn't say this, but... Michael just never seemed to give much of a damn about anything but himself. Michael, no! Diane, get out of here. Don't you move or I swear I'll blow your fucking head off. Stay calm, Michael. Everything will be fine if you just put down the gun. Shut up! Now give me your gun. Hand it over slowly. Jesus, Michael, I think you broke my arm. Diane, he's the one. He's the one that's been doing all this. Now get inside and call the police. Michael. Put the gun down! Diane, look at his hand! It's Danny Evans! Michael! Michael, stop! Please stop! Diane! It. Stay down! Diane, don't move! We don't want anybody to get hurt! You never could knock me down, could you, Danny? You never could do anything better than me, and you still can't. Child killer. You fucking coward. Give me the gun, Diane. <laughs> Diane, no! Just give it to me. I never, I never got to tell you. Sean or Dad, I'm sorry. Michael. Michael, hang on. Stay with me, hang on. Do you hear that? Listen, listen, Diane. They're calling your name. <laughs> <laughs> 